for more than six months, Australia has burned. Millions of hectares have been scorched. Thousands of homes destroyed and dozens of lives lost. But beyond the human tragedy is a wildlife catastrophe of staggering proportions. There's corpses littering the ground. Nothing could have prepared me for it. The scale is, it just can't be described. More than a billion animals have been killed, with some species teetering on the brink. Without being dramatic at all, it's on the edge. You know, this could be the next species to go extinct in Australia. 101 East investigates Australia's wildlife emergency. Off the southern coast of Australia is a natural wonder. Kangaroo Island is famous for its beautiful landscapes and unique wildlife. But now it's unrecognisable. When we saw the fires hit Kangaroo Island, it was pretty clear straight away that it was bad. This is Evan Quatermain. He's come to the island with one mission, to save as many animals as he can. Today, he's heading to an area where until recently, koalas thrived. We're heading out towards the Flinders Chase National Park, which was one of the first areas to be hit by fire on the island, and it's, um, it's extremely confronting, the, the amount of death. I mean, for every, every live one we bring in, we are seeing hundreds that, that died in the fires. Now we're seeing dozens and dozens as well that have uh, you know, died of dehydration or starvation um, since. As we drive further, we pass a grisly scene. It gets me every single time. There's um, koalas, but mostly wallabies, probably about, I don't know, 50 of them. Just all that you can see as they have escaped the forest that none of them made it. Um, there was just nowhere to run. It, this whole place was just on fire. It's excessively traumatic. Evans with a team from Humane Society International, including disaster response specialist Kelly Donathan. And she's already spotted something. It's a tiny joey sitting in the fork of a tree, kind of just looking a bit bewildered. It looks like it's going to be a, a fairly easy pickup. And that's the thing, the worse they are, the easier they are to get. The fact that she could just walk up to that, that would never happen in the wild. This is, these are wild animals. So here we go. The first joey of the day. Kangaroo Island is the only place in Australia where the koala population is free of disease. While they're endangered on the mainland, here their numbers have soared, even prompting calls for a cull. But now 80% of their habitat is gone. This is a water station that we set up. Um, so we're gonna check the cameras on it. There are some koalas up in the trees around here, so if we can just move cautiously and quietly, um, we'll check it out and see if anything uses the station overnight. They don't have anything to eat out here, but if we can at least get them some something to drink, then they might be able to last a few more days, and that gives us a chance to come out and hopefully pick them up and save them. Guy is still there. Oh yeah, being blown around. You can see there's a joey there, big one up yeah. there. So these ones, they're going to be, even though they seem in okay condition for now, we just know that looking around through these forests, there's nothing for them to eat for kilometres. There's no way that they're going to be able to survive in the long term. Here's a koala right at the base of the tree. So he's, yeah. he's at this tree yeah. and gone up, one up there. Something's been coming down and having Look at fit. that one. Oh, wow. They're being used. Yeah. That's, that's he's really, sitting right at it. That's really heartwarming. That's our first evidence we've these camera traps out here. So that's good. We know they're, 
they were doing their job. Let's look for some more. We move on through the charred forest. So there are, as you can see here, just come across the bodies of the dead mother and its young Joey. They've died together in these intense flames. Eucalypts are so volatile in terms of the, the oil that they have in them, so we would have just, it would have just been like an explosion through here. Um, and yeah, you know, just would have been devastating. In the distance, Kelly spots a koala moving along the ground. So he just sat, so I'll go and try, see. But he's moving pretty quick, so. As long as we stay behind the line of sight, if we can. I just, I just have to wait here. Kelly wants to rush this koala to a vet for help. Koalas normally spend a very small percentage of time on the ground, so the fact that we find them on the ground and they're approachable shows that there's an issue happening and it's probably dehydration and, and lack of nutrition. On the way back to the car, she spots another one. This is supposed to be peak tourism season on Kangaroo Island. But instead of sightseers flying in, there's soldiers and firefighters. Fires sparked by lightning have raged through the dense native bushland since December, even causing fire tornadoes. No, you don't go into a room you can't get out of. Shut it, shut it. Some locals tried to protect their properties, but dozens of homes were lost and two people died. Almost half of Kangaroo Island has been raised by fire, about 2,100 square kilometres. And this is what's left of Flinders Chase National Park. This scorched landscape had been home to a diverse range of native wildlife, many of which are found nowhere else. To cope with the number of sick and injured animals, volunteers have set up a clinic at the Kangaroo Island Wildlife Sanctuary, where Kelly and Evan are bringing in their rescues. My little one. Among the volunteers is Dr. Peter Hutchison. Let's just give a little bit of sedation. He's been caring for animals for more than 30 years. It's a male, so we don't need to check for pouch young. We're quite thin, so we're uh, probably a little bit dehydrated, a little bit underweight, but he's in pretty good shape and hopefully if we can just uh, give him a bit of hydration, um, get him eating, hopefully he'll be running around in no time. Are they usually in this condition? This is rare. We're normally finding lots of burns on the feet uh, that we need to treat. We need to give them pain relief, antibiotics. Cases like this one on an operating table nearby. As much as they look quite bad, we've seen a lot of these come in like this and they've healed quite nicely and um, a lot of the time, um, in uh, one to two weeks, uh, they're almost healed. So this is the microchip. So this is how we identify them. And this is we're just going to put in here. Okay. Otherwise, you end up with the wrong one getting the wrong treatment. How many koalas have you had coming through here? Well, this is T106. Uh, that means there's 106 T's. There's also S's and C's. They've had about 300 I would animals. imagine more than 300. Yeah. Look at the ears, just slightly singed. They're not too bad. 
Eyes are fine. Teeth are fine. Just poor hairs. That's looking good. This one here's got a little burn on the foot. This one again, but not something we need to treat at this stage. So looking good. Uh, we're female. Okay. Does this mean Have you need to check so, for a joey? So we're checking for a joey. She did have a joey, okay, because the teat is quite enlarged. So unfortunately with the fire and the stress and dehydration, uh, she's dropped the joey. Unfortunately, that's a survival mechanism with them, um, that uh, if there's any um, stress in their life, um, they will just drop the joey. So it's sad, but um, unfortunately, it's a survival mechanism for them. Peter has volunteered to help in four bushfire emergencies over the last five years. It looks like a black swan, isn't it? Yeah. It yeah. looks like a swan, yes. Yeah. But he says he hasn't seen anything quite like this. How would you rate what you're seeing now compared to some of the other crises that you've responded this to? This is a lot harder because the severity of the injuries seem to be much worse than um, what I've seen in the past. Um, and there's certainly a lot more um, dead wildlife out there. Dealing with the vast number of dead animals is taking a heavy toll on frontline volunteers. Evan's an ecologist and usually spends more time writing about threatened wildlife than working in the field. It's been a bit surprising to me. I, I feel I'm a pretty resilient person, but the mental impact has been, yeah, severe. The things I've been seeing out here have been giving me nightmares. Just the postures that they've died in, that's particularly haunting. The stench of death, you know, nothing could have prepared me for it. I knew there were burnt animals here, but the scale is, it just can't be described. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a wildlife lover. It's just, you know, that's the reason I do what I do. It breaks my heart to see the agony that is going on out here. Uh, it's been, it's been an extremely stressful week. While the plight of Australia's koalas and kangaroos has been attracting the world's attention, conservationists are rushing to rescue other lesser known animals which are at risk of extinction. The wildlife loss has come in two waves. The first is the animals that died in the fires, and the second is playing out right now, as those that survived battle it out over whatever food is left. It's also become a hunting ground, with the cover provided by trees and foliage now gone, leaving little protection from predators. Hey, Pat. Hello, how are you going? I'm meeting with wildlife ecologist, Pat Hodgins. He's helping one of the world's most vulnerable species, the Kangaroo Island Dunnart. You're about 200 metres away probably from a, you know, Australia's probably rarest animal that we've got at the moment. Pat's been studying the small mouse-like marsupial for more than five years. So the Kangaroo Island Dunnart, it's part of the Dazzyurid family, which uh, has got a, a whole lot of different um, species within it, so the Tasmanian tiger was, was, was related to these guys, um, the Tasmanian devil and western quolls. On Kangaroo Island they're the only uh, native carnivore or native carnivorous marsupial um, uh, that, that lives within this, within this habitat. There were thought to be less than 500 of them before the fires, but nearly all of their habitat has been destroyed. What was this place like? Uh, it's unrecognisable, like if you were here a month ago before the fires, you, we'd be pushing through, there's big vegetation, these banks here were you know, way out here, uh, so you know, we would have been kind of pushing through like this and getting scratched arms and yeah, and just had to like follow little animal pathways through here, so it's totally unrecognisable at the moment. Um, but I mean, it's, we are lucky, we've still got these little, tiny little patches of Eden, I guess you'd say. And right now, the only Dunnarts that we know about are living in that little patch. So that actually, really, they could be the last Dunnarts that we've even got. 
there's good news. We had a donut here last night, so you can see here on oh, this. Oh, really? If you look there on that rock, oh, that's a, a donut. Guy. That's that's the little fella there. So it's amazing to think that just a few hours ago there was a kangaroo island donut right there. Just makes your work even more urgent. Yeah, that's right. Yep, it's time time critical now. That's for sure. No action is too small in Pat's bid to save this local species. Every day, he tosses mealworms into this area for donuts to eat. It's not unrealistic to think that we're, you know, monitoring the extinction of an animal. It's, um, yeah, something... So documenting it in real time. Yeah, yeah, it's something I never thought I would be doing in my career, that's for sure. And, yeah, we're just going to work bloody hard to make it not be the case. It's not going to be easy. The fires may have passed, but the Kangaroo Island Dunart is still under threat. Kangaroo Island has got a, a very large feral cat population um, and right now everything's coming into these very small patches of habitat and it's like a, you know, kind of like a war zone really, like everyone's fighting for survival. Um, and the feral cats, you know, are, are highly evolved predators um, and Australian marsupials, Australian animals haven't evolved ever with a, a predator quite like it. So if you have a, a small animal like a donut coming up against something like a cat, um, it's, you know, it's a, it's, it's a disaster waiting to happen. Pat has set up 26 cat traps around this critical site, including something a little high tech. All right, so we're just here now. We've got um, we're just at one of the Felix uh, grilling traps, which is the new technology that we're trialling. Um, so we'll um, get out and have a look, see how it's gone. The Felixer uses a special array of cameras and motion sensors to accurately detect when a feral cat is walking past. And when it does, bam! It will fire um, out some toxin onto the back uh, hind quarter of the cat, and then the cat, being a cat, will instinctively groom itself. So even if it was just water on the cat's back, the cat just has to clean itself. Um, and so the cat ingests a toxic dose of poison, um, and then will go off and, and die. Many ecologists like Pat believe it's one of the more humane ways to cull feral cats. So I'll just have a look here on this USB and see what's happened overnight. Okay, so here we go. So that's oh. cat last night. And has it been hit with a toxin? That cat has been hit. So we have, you know, taken out another cat. So it's, it's actually the, the best news that we could have hoped for. A lot of people will be wondering why someone who's working with wildlife and wildlife conservation is also keen to kill an animal. Yeah. Can you tell us why you're killing cats? Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, we, we know through extensive research in Australia that feral cats are, you know, one of the key threatening processes to our native species. Cats are introduced to Australia. They've been here for, you know, for, for you know, a couple of centuries, like about 200 years. Um, cats, cats are great. Cats are great pets. Um, they're amazing animals in their normal environment. But here in Australia, where they don't belong, you know, feral cats are the worst thing for our native animals. And we owe it to those native species to, to help them as much as we can and, yeah, remove the, the predation pressure while we can. So how much damage can one cat do to the Dunnart species? Oh, well, huge. One cat in one night could take out that whole population that, we've, that we currently know about. They could cause the extinction of the Dunnart. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, you know, you know, initially the, you know, the fire has, has been a big catalyst, um, but the cat um, following up is, you know, yeah, is, is potentially the thing to finish off the species. So combined, these two big threatening processes, um, yeah, could, could take it out for sure. Well, all the flag traps should roughly line up. When the stakes are this high, cat traps aren't going to be enough to save this critically endangered mammal. So Pat is mapping out a fence to keep feral cats out. Where did you get to today? I managed to get a pretty straight line from about here right through. That's the critical vegetation that we've got the Dunnart still surviving in there. Because if we waited, um, these guys probably wouldn't be here. So we've just got to get the, get the species um, through the next couple of weeks until we get the fence up and then we'll be able to sleep, sleep a little bit easier. Back across the island at the clinic, the vets have their hands full. So this is where T105 is. 
Peter is checking on the koalas Evan and Kelly brought in the day before. Yeah, let's just have a look at you guys. So this is our little one here. Okay, a little bit shy as we can see, uh, but the eyes are looking fine. We're gripping with those paws quite well. We're trying to use this as a tree. Okay, so we're gripping the back legs on the base of it, and that's what koalas do. They want to always hold on to something. She doesn't want to be with uh, us at the moment, um, but it does look like she's been eating and drinking, um, so I'm not too concerned at this point. Mm. What do you need to see in order to be convinced that she can be released again? Uh, so that will be if she's gaining weight and continues to eat and drink over the next 48 hours, then we would be putting her in the release pen um, uh, with some other females. Uh, and then um, hopefully in a couple of weeks time, we'll start looking for areas around Kangaroo Island. We can then release them out into the wild. So we will have a check on the male that you picked up yesterday, um, T106. Just open up this one. Now, where are you? Looks like you might be up the tree. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me all about it. So again, eyes are looking good. It's really good if they've climbed a tree. That means they're feeling, this is my new home. This is where I want to live. So he's adjusting to being here in the sanctuary? Yes, yeah, definitely but um, we want them to actually have a little bit of fight. Um, if they don't have some fight and, you know, accept it really readily, especially being a wild animal, we'd be concerned about their health. Okay. So these are the two real critical patches yep. that we need to protect. Meanwhile, Pat has a new ally in his quest to save the Kangaroo Island Dunnart, professional feral cat trapper Murray Schofield. Yeah, so we'll head through here and find the camera traps. Murray's with the Australian Wildlife Conservancy, a group dedicated to protecting native animals from introduced species. Bushmate or a very small bandicoot. It's tough, they long for it. It's a wallaby, a little wallaby, isn't it? It's a little bandicoot. Oh! Hang on. It's a dunno. It looked like one. Yeah, I reckon it is. He's just running along the other side of the fence there. Big cat chasing him. Trying to, trying to work out how to, how to get through. Ah, that's so cool. It's great news. Proof that the species has survived another night. But there's also been a more ominous discovery. We've found uh, another cat we haven't seen here before. Looks like a female cat, and we've got lots of images of her actually walking past the camera. Um, and she, yeah, we're calling her Soxy because her left foot is white. Um, so it's really important when you find cats in here that we identify how many there are, and it gives us a bit of an idea, and so we can actually map her home range in here. Um, we'll we'll allow Murray to really kind of hone in um, on her movements to try to try to hunt her down. You want to get trapped in so you stop him keep getting there to, to eat him. Yeah. They've got a week to go before we can get this fenced. So yeah. Every night's critical for these little guys right now. No pressure. No pressure at all. <laughs> yeah. Murray gets to work. A couple of different models here. These are called catavolts. That's what we call the style of trap, because um, it's a like a vault, so they get locked in there. Don't hate the cats, but I hate them killing the dunnarts. Murray's trying hard not to fixate on his latest obsession, finding Soxie. Sometimes it's bad knowing what they look like, because then you, you catch another cat, well, that's not him, and then you get another one, oh, that's not him, and he's still out there, so sometimes it's bad knowing what they look like. Right, start playing on your mind a bit. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, oh, I haven't got him yet, or oh, I haven't got it yet. But within just a few days, Soxie's been caught. With the help of traps and fences, Pat hopes that the Kangaroo Island Dunnarts 
will not only survive the fire season's devastation, but will thrive. Meanwhile, Evan's time on Kangaroo Island has come to an end, for now. It's been one of the best and most devastating experiences of my life, but I can't wait to get back here and see how this place bounces back. We still don't know how devastating the long-term consequences of, of these fires will be, not just here on Kangaroo Island, but in Australia as a whole. But there's been amazing resilience in the community, everyone just helping each other out, and, you know, that's what we need.